Thank you so much for spending some time with the Community Violence Intervention Center. I'm Koya Tompkins, President and CEO. Our vision at CVIC is to end interpersonal violence in two generations through safety, healing, and education. And today we get to actually talk about all three because we are with Officer Justin O'Neill and Troy Vanio from the Grand Forks Police Department. I'd like to talk a little bit about the Citizens Academy because it's such a great program for our community and we're so blessed to have it. Um, and Justin, you were actually one of the ones that was tapped to sort of relaunch this program. So what was your vision when you got a hold of it? Well, Lieutenant Jeremy Moe and I sat down because obviously things come from higher levels and we wanted to figure out a way to integrate the community more with the department as a whole. So what we were really focusing on though was really humanizing police and that we're not these big scary, only seeing things in black and white, only looking to enforce law, but we do so many other things. So we wanted to immerse the public into a entire PD wide vision, if you would, so that they could see everything we do from our community policing, our special operation groups like SWAT teams and such, everything. We wanted everyone to see what we do so we could answer the questions that people have about law enforcement and that we could also cut through that veil of what only maybe the media portrays but rather this is what real life is. This is what we do on a daily basis. I was so floored with just how diverse police work is. Um, you kind of tend to think of it as patrol but it's so much more broader than that. Mm -hmm. Who would be a good candidate to to actually apply for because you actually have to apply for the academy there's only so many spots quite honestly um, we're looking for anyone who's not necessarily interested in law enforcement per se but who's curious who's curious about what does my community do how does my law enforcement agency at the Grand Forks Police Department what do they do and how do they get it done um, but not only that but just people who are also getting um, getting trying to get to know our law enforcement people mm -hmm. you know I mean we take them on ride-alongs we take them in a very um, non-structured environment where we actually just get to know you and you get to basically become friends with us essentially. So anyone really. So this is kind of neat because um, you've been partners for a long time, you've been friends for a long time, and now Justin is kind of passing, Officer O'Neill is passing that torch mm -hmm. to you as the new Citizens Academy coordinator. Tell us a little bit about what are the activities that sure. you do in the Citizens Academy. Uh, what we try to do is make it hands-on we don't want people to be PowerPointed to death in the class and sitting in a classroom. Right. There, there is some of that because that's how we get some, yeah. We try to make it hands-on and get them involved. So we do things like we will actually take them to our outdoor range where they get to shoot and have our firearms instructor show them how to shoot. Um, we do things like we last year we did a mock crime scene where they get to like beginning to end what our detectives do in investigating crime, so they get that hands-on portion too. Um, we bring in um, officers that make DUI arrests, so we show how field sobriety tests are done. Something we did li different last year, and it worked out really well, is we actually took a tour of the coroner's office here in town. Um, they get to see all of our equipment, our UAS, so we kind of have a broad range of things that we show them, kind of our the special equipment we have, how we conduct crime investigations, the shooting part. Um, simulator. The, the, the simulator that we have at the training academy. And what Justin and I do also too is at the end of the year, um, everyone does an evaluation. And we always get high marks for what we do, but we're always looking at ways to improve things. So we take that into account too. So we're always tweaking it, and we've have tweaked it the past few years just to make it better. Tell us a little bit about what the what the the attendees are saying, because the other thing I found interesting is it's a pretty diverse group. Mm -hmm. It's people that do want to be cops or have an interest in it, or maybe they're just a someone who really cares about their community but it was we had health care in there we had a couple cvrc or several actually 10 um but just fascinating like the diversity of the attendees but what did they tell you about well they get to see firsthand with the ride-along portion and because that's what happens um, an officer can go from a very high stressful call like a pursuit or you know going hands-on having to put someone in handcuffs to the next call is they're dealing with someone with mental health issues and they have to really get on a one-on-one -on -one basis with that person or maybe a parent is calling because their child is misbehaving so the officer has to go in and kind of do a parent talk to them and so 
all those things happen in one shift or in an hour where they're going between those things. And the different people we have in our classes, we have older people that have always been interested in law enforcement and what really goes on in Grand Forks. We have people that um, we work closely with in housing that kind of want to see how we do those things too. So we try to provide a, an overall, I, I call it like a behind the curtain look at this is what's really going on in Grand Forks. and. Um, I think everyone really enjoys it. It's very rare that we have someone who is disappointed or didn't like something or um, there. It's very eye opening, I guess, is um, what I hear from people. I mean, I think all of us in leadership are constantly talking about recruiting and staffing and how do we find the right people for the right jobs. And that's not the law enforcement in our town. It's uh, happening here, too. You're running short, so you have to kind of wear different hats and um, and I think it's, is it six officers at any one time that are on shift? That, I'll, you, I'll, you can, I'll let you jump in. Oh, you're just going to let me talk. Well, you're, yeah. all right, well, that's fine. <laughs> yeah, uh, well, you're going to patrol soon. So. Yeah, yeah, and you get to retire, aren't yeah. you lucky? Yes. So, uh, yeah, so, I mean, at any given time, we have between six and eight officers per shift, and then we have an overlap from 10 p.m. to 3 a.m., and then we also have a power shift from noon all the way until 10 p.m., and there's a couple more officers, so... But you're guaranteed a minimum of six with at least one sergeant, so seven total officers on duty. Um, Troy and I don't count during those minimums, so during day shift we do have more admin staff and such around. But uh, yeah, to cover you know a place of sixty to seventy thousand people, uh, with the help of the sheriff's office and UNDPD, it's we get busy. We take around 50,000 calls for service a year and we just keep moving call to call. <laughs> well, I hope we can have you back because I know uh, mental health has been another big um, big challenge for all of us in this work, um, but I know you've, you've done a lot of digging into that and um, I know just uh, that's a big issue, so we'd like to invite you back to talk sure. more about that and how we can help you with that. We can talk about that for like three hours. Yeah, yeah. We'll, we'll, bring a, our we'll need a little bit longer than 10 15 minutes <laughs> yes. to cover yeah. that one. Yeah. Yes. Okay, thank you again for being you here. Okay. Thanks, yeah. Koya.